Trails Collective, what's shaking? Ian here for the rundown of results from a pretty busy weekend uh, throughout the collective on the event scene, particularly given the year of COVID uh, just this past weekend. So I'm thankful we got a pretty full episode ahead, uh, weaving in a good number of voices, whether it be entrance or RDs for events that shook out. So it's really my hope for these episodes to weave in voices from the collective. So to all of you who have checked in and offered to film or submit clips or um, provide a rundown of your events, uh, I'm thankful because that's really what I want this to be about. So I'm going to jump right into it. So the first one, which I've mentioned in the past couple weeks, is one that I was looking forward to uh, on a personal level uh, since I saw them start to piece it together, I think it was a couple years ago now, is Rim to River Endurance's Rim to River 100. Uh, there are no results listed yet. Uh, this is one that I think are really, is really going to uh, catch. And I was able to connect with the women's winner, uh, Whitney Richmond and Greg Loomis. Thanks for that connection and segue there. I also, uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to weave in here in just a second uh, a clip from Whitney Richmond. She'll take you a little bit through the event, uh, the course, and how, the, uh, how it shook out for her. So uh, just a second. And also check out the crew at Ridge Runner, uh, a good crew of uh, individuals doing also uh, weekly rundowns, interviews uh, based out of Ohio. And their live episode number 37, which uh, aired tonight, uh, look for. And we'll plug it here in the show notes. But uh, that was an interview with Whitney as well as Caleb Bowen, I think the men's winner. Uh, so you're sure to get some good details and shop talk there. But for the moment and for Trails Collective, go ahead and take it, Whitney. Hey everybody, how you doing? My name is Whitney Richmond. I ran the Rim to River 100 mile race in New River Gorge, West Virginia this past weekend. I'm gonna give you a little review of it. It was the first 100 mile race in West Virginia and it was mostly trail. There was a little bit of road, um, paved road and gravel road and like fire dirt road. Um, but I'd say 85% of it was trail. This race was great. It had everything. It had leaf covered trails with rocks and roots enough that you would fall on your face eight times like I did and look like you got in a fight. Um, <laughs> and it had waterfalls and water crossings and bridges and views. Um, you ran to a lookout at one point and um, it had a giant, the New River, the bridge in the New River Gorge that you ran basically under and then up and around. Um, it was beautiful. And if you could take your eyes off the trail for a few minutes to actually look around, I didn't because I'm a road runner mostly. <laughs> um, and um, it, was, it was a wonderful race. It starts at Ace Resort, Ace uh, Adventure Resort, which is in like Oak Hill, West Virginia. And then it runs a little bit on that property and then it goes into uh, the national park, the New River Gorge National Park. And um, there's a couple, oh, I forgot. There's um, some great little technical sections. They're not very long, but there was one section that I dubbed the stairs of death because at, it was during the day you went up it and it was, I mean, it was, it's technical and it was great. I love to hike. So I was all, all for it. But then I knew it was coming at night and it, when you're like 30 miles from the finish um, and your quads are real tired from all the elevation um, and the downhills, yeah, the, that little section was, was a little rough. But um, at least when you get through it, then you run pretty much flat on, on some um, really runnable trail. So there were about, I'd say like 150 people who ran it. Um, they did waves and the eight stations were fantastic. They were about every eight or nine miles apart. The people at the eight stations were the most friendly, helpful people. They all were COVID conscious and wearing masks and everything. And they were just the nicest, most positive people. And it was like, they had been doing this for 10 years. It, it's a first year race and they seemed like they were like, no problem. They knew what they were doing. So it was great. And one of the aid stations at Ace Beach um, was awesome. The guys there were just like really hilarious. And there were a couple fires going 
and um, they had some pizza, which really hit the spot for me. Um, if you run the race, just beware that you need, I would, you don't need to, but I would highly recommend that you um, print out the directions. The race director makes very specific directions before the race and I didn't bring them and I wish I had because I missed a few turns and added like six extra miles into the race. But, and I think some people missed, but then some people didn't, they, they did fine. Um, one of the flags I think was actually missing in the race structure that actually came down and found me and my pacer at mile 91 when he was in his truck and followed us back to the trail and got us back on course. Um, but this is definitely a race that you can do. You can do it without a crew if you want. It's a great first trail, like real trail 100. I've never really done a real trail 100. Um, 13,000 feet of elevation gain and loss. So it's not too bad, but it's it's enough to really make you feel like you're working for it. Um, and, but if you do bring a crew, they're gonna really love it because it's beautiful and they'll have so much time to like hike around and look at the sights and stuff. So I highly recommend it. This race is gonna get real popular real quick and you better get in what you can. So have fun, keep running, and don't fall on your face like me. And the Baltimore night move six mile went down. This is one that had a 6.30 p.m. start uh, this past Saturday, uh, starting just after sundown in Cromwell Valley Park in Baltimore. Uh, Six-ish miles that included some fast single track, rolling hills, and fast downhill finish. Sounds like a pretty cool course, nice event. Um, the results were not yet live, so I don't have those, but I will plug the link to where they will be. The Bobcat Trail Run 11 Mile was run in Cunningham State Park uh, using the Catoctin and Cat Rock Trails. Uh, it was COVID limited to 55 entrants, but with no lack of quality in the field. Gabriel Rodriguez threw down for the win and a big course record in one hour, 30 minutes, with Laura Bergman securing the top women's spot in 213, also a new course record. Uh, so nice work. The Dirt Monster 5-mile trail race and 1-mile walk, a cross-country race in North Park near Pittsburgh, 116 finishers with Dalton Calbao uh, Calbao taking the overall win in 30-38, with Justine Pollock taking the women's win in 40-43. And we'll plug the link to the results. The Hamster Wheel Timed Event, put on by Just Keep Running in Hillsborough County Fairgrounds in New Hampshire. Uh, they used a 4-mile loop. And they had a 6-hour, 12-hour, 24-hour, and 30-hour events, including relays. They had a uh, reduced field size, 175, which did cap out. The results weren't listed, but better than that, we were able to check in with and get the rundown from uh, the Bills Squared. CoRD Bill is the first Bill, and cue us into the event. Hey there, this is Bill Conley, race director for uh, the Hamster Wheel in New Boston, New Hampshire. Uh, doing a little piece here for the Trails Collective uh, weekly rundown. Um, if you're not familiar with the Hamster Wheel, it is a uh, timed endurance race, 6, uh, 12, 24, or 30 hours. Uh, we're located in New Boston. Uh, the event has taken place for the last six years at the Hillsborough County uh, Fairgrounds, and we utilize the New Boston Rail Trail. Uh, it's a, an out-and-back four-mile loop. Um, and it's it's been amazing to see it grow. It's uh, it's an amazing uh, fun race. We uh, you know do music and we do movies at night and, and a wide variety of food and, and all sorts of fun uh, things to keep people entertained as they run throughout the night. Um, to speak to some of the things that we we kind of ran into this year, some of the challenges that we ran into and, and the stresses in, in putting this event on, certainly had to uh, work a lot more diligently to ensure it was a safe event. Um, you know, one of the things that uh, my wife, Darby, who's uh, co-race director um, uh, of the event with me, uh, and I talked about was the, the, the need for runners to, to get a live event in this year, right? Uh, so many events were canceled um, and not available for, for people. And we really wanted to see um, if we could do this in a way that was safe, give people an, an event to train for and, and work toward, um, and then pull it off. And, and, and I think we did. Um, you know, certainly there were some challenges, right? We, you know, some of the things that we implemented this year to ensure a safe race um, were staggered start times, first of all. Um, typically, all the runners have started at the same time, 9 a.m. on Saturday morning. Um, this year, we uh, altered that a little bit in that we started the 
uh, 30-hour race at 9 a.m. and then uh, launch the 24-hour race at 9.15 and then the 6- and 12-hour races at uh, 9.30. Um, and then we really actually went very smoothly, far smoother than I thought it was going to. Um, you know, typically in the past we have a kind of a, a buffet-style food uh, service sort of thing where folks can come into the this main center building at the fairgrounds um, come in and, and pick whatever food they want. This year it was a little bit different. Obviously, um, we had uh, we were fortunate enough to have a ton of volunteers who were able to help us in serving food to runners, um, which certainly mitigated um, you know exposure to um, multiple people. Kind of um, you know you know uh, touching spoons and utensils and things like that. It made it a lot easier to keep things sanitary and and that sort of thing. Um, you know, obviously, the the more challenging part is keeping people um, socially distanced, and and I think you know the the race start um, thing certainly helped. We uh, brought in additional portable toilets this year um, and spread them out a little bit so that um, folks had a little more room and and there wasn't so much uh, folks uh, you know so much a situation of folks standing around in line waiting um, to utilize the restrooms. Um, I'm trying to think, what else do we do? Um, you know, certainly a ton of sanitizer. We bought a lot of sanitizer and made sure that that was available for everybody uh, throughout the event. And then, um, you know, in terms of camping, um, one of the nice things about the race being at the fairgrounds is it really um, is a pretty open uh, spot. It allows people to um, to kind of spread out and, and that sort of thing. So certainly a challenging year, but uh, I think we were able to, to really pull it off. Folks um, have, the, you know, the feedback has certainly been positive so far and, and folks have been really, I think, appreciative of the fact that we, we put the time and effort into to make it a safe event, um, but still have it and, and give folks a chance to get at least a race in uh, before the end of the year and, and, and you know, get to kind of uh, catch up with, with old friends and, and get back out on the trails again. So... And 30-hour finisher and legend Bill Odendahl on how it shook out over a few 30 hours from his vantage point. Nice work, Bill. Let's hear it. Hi, this is Bill Odendahl reporting on the Hamster Wheel, the dumbest race in New Hampshire. Uh, I ended up doing the 30-hour race. Um, the course is very easy. It consists of a 1.75 out and 1.75 back on a pretty flat, not technical course with a little bit of a drop-off on each side, so you have to be a little bit careful there, especially at night. Uh, and then it has a, a hill that you climb up with, kind of rocky, and then you go and have a gradual descent, and then you end up at the start finish. So it's a four-mile loop, which is pretty good because then you get to have uh, food each four miles, and the food was amazing. The food was definitely the calling card of this race. It was diner-type style food. You come up to the area, and it was like a huge menu of different things that uh, you, you could have. Uh, I really like the pierogies and some other things, uh, but especially the in the morning you had these awesome breakfast sandwiches, but there were so many different things on the menu there that you could have, and chili, mac and cheese, uh, pizza, it was really good stuff. And um, so uh, you start off with a, uh, a dog tag style medal, and you end up getting coins each loop, and you can put them on here, carry them with you, or put them wherever you need to and uh, you know that's how you keep track of your laps they also keep track of their free for you um, but that's so everyone's on the same page um, what's really cool is if your time is running out and you start a lap before time comes out you can actually finish it afterwards and they will count it uh, that's everything for except for the buckle it won't count for a buckle for the 100 miles and stuff like that but speaking of the buckle it's a pretty cool buckle it's pretty good size and it's got I don't know if you can see the glowing eyes um, but it's a little hamster with glowing eyes, eyes and stuff, and um, it's very nice. Um, I I like the fact that parking is really close by too. It's like 50 feet away from you, so if you need to get something out of your car, you can get that. But you can set up tents, chairs uh, along the along the start finish area to have everything you need to. Uh, in the middle of the night, I was pretty much saved by a fire pit and that, that they had, and you can hang out by the fire and stay warm. And that was really good. Listen, if you like uh, fun, family, uh, friendly type of uh, races, this is it for you. I'm going to definitely be back. Uh, the race, the runners, the volunteers, even the spectators were all so much fun and very helpful. Um, this was a really fun race. And that's it. Thanks, uh, thanks for listening. Bye. The cross-county trail marathon and half put on by the crew at Atlas Endurance Sports in Springfield, Virginia went down. They had 61 finishers in the marathon with Ariel uh, Le- Legui 
taking the win in 249 and Sarah Latiel, or something to that effect. Sorry for the last names there, in 354. In the half, there are 43 finishers with Cosmo Morello taking the win in 127 and Lauren Curley on his heels at 131. Tuckahoe 25K, uh, put on by Centerville Crushers and Algonquin Ultras in Queen Anne, Maryland. A good rolling course and middle distance for first timers or those who want to run fast. Coming at you from the source, a segue from RD, Trent Swanson. Hey Trails Collective, this is Trent Swanson from Algonquin Ultras and along with the Crushers we were able to put on a very exciting race this past weekend, a live race, the Tuckahoe 25K. It's an exciting place to run, an exciting time of the year and we say a perfect distance. We had 207 runners come out and run the Tuckahoe 25K. 205 completed the event. Matt Berggren was, a, was the winner in a, an hour 52 minutes and 25 seconds and for the ladies Maria Miller completed the course in two hours six minutes and 18 seconds so we're excited to get everyone out live we actually had to tweak everything a little bit because of COVID we started everyone out on a curve type approach where there were six or seven actually about ten different curves and each person picked an X where they were six feet apart from everybody else and when we started all the aid stations were actually touchless so all the water was poured into people's hydration systems and they were able to get through the course without touching anyone. So there's a lot of spacing, a lot of social distancing, a lot of uh, wipes being used and a lot of people out there. So we're excited to put it on. The event had 60% women, so it was nice to get the ladies out on the trail and we're excited to present the Tuggo 25K with a lot of excellent swag as you can see here, a nice hoodie for our runners and uh, nice boco hat for them as well so if you want to come out and run check out the tuckahoe 25k every november here on delmarva we also have a few other events you may have heard of the algonquin 50k in february and the pemberton 24 hour event in september so join myself trent algonquin altars and the crushers and come to delmarva and run the radiator burns remember that and delmarva is flat not and I'm also thankful to Charles Starkey, who reached out ahead to let us know he was running and was up for cutting some media from the weekend. So we'll weave together a few of his clips. Uh, so Charles, thanks so much. Take it. <laughs> Coming to you live from Tuckahoe 25K. How'd it go, guys? Awesome. Beautiful day, great race. It was. Gorgeous weather, awesome course, loved it. I mean, you mean terrible, difficult course full of mud and hills? Nothing. What? Nothing compared to what we've run at the Tapsico back home. Gotcha. Although I got stream crossing, yeah, I got my foot pretty bad. Yeah, that was a pretty good one. Yeah. 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 There, there was Stopped no. my foot under the mud. <laughs> oh my god. And good swag, I see the uh, the Tuckahoe awesome chips and yes. yes, fantastic. Yes, awesome. Love Here. It. All right. Well, thanks, guys. Yes, good job in the race. For 2020, this is my first in-person race since quarantine began back way back in March. I did this race last year, a uh, lot of fun. At the time, that was my longest race ever, uh, trail or road. So came back, definitely had to do it again this year. Uh, I'm so glad that they were able to put everything together and get this to uh, be able to happen here in 2020 in person. A lot of energy. A lot of people are gone by now, but it was uh, pretty full with great protocols in the beginning. Everybody distanced out on lines painted in the grass, uh, six feet plus everybody apart. And then we did the course and we took off around the bend and off into the trails. Uh, trails are good, not too hilly. We are in Delmarva, so it's, I think it was about five or 600 feet elevation gain over the 25K, <clears throat> so pretty flat. Uh, but a good course runnable the whole time definitely a few stream crossings and you are going to get wet there's no way around it kind of had to almost jump off into a pool and and carry through just adds to the fun trent and the crushers put this one on and it's they are just a fantastic group it's full of energy positive vibes but cheering everybody that comes through can't recommend enough um, trent and this race and all his races you see the uh, big sign there for the finish, Algonquin Ultras. Trent also puts on the Algonquin 50K coming up next February. 
and uh, a series of other ones throughout the year. I'm going to see if I can get a minute to go talk to Trent directly, just ask him how things went. Trent, is this a virtual race? This is not a virtual race. I mean, hats off to people that can virtually do things. We like to do things live on Delmarva. Uh, it's a real race. It's amazing. It's amazing. Hey, this is a great one. Thanks for putting this on. Oh, you're welcome. You're yeah, welcome. Th cra crazy year. Hey, where's your bib? Why's it on the back? We can't read it. <laughs> Qualified. You know, there's, there's a... Uh, there's a purpose of this, so we can see the numbers. Mm -hmm. But uh, no, it's we're going great. Uh, perfect day, perfect distance, perfect time of the year. Imperfect runners, but they're doing the best they can out there. We've had a lot of great runners. The fastest time today was like 152. Nice. Okay. The female fastest, I think, was under two hours as well. Um, well. Let's just say this has been a crazy year for everybody. Very sad. The the illnesses and the deaths across the country and the world it's nice that we could do this with trying to employ good protocols and have a, a good event for today and the last one in the mix for this week that was on our radar the view 25k was a pa trail dogs event went down on uh, sunday in heiner pa and the intent was to put on a one-off event giving some of those who weren't able to run with the event being canceled in the spring for heiner view challenge the opportunity uh, to get up on the course. The course uses two, I think, of the three climbs of the 25K course, so maintain some of the signature pieces, including the signature Heiner view, uh, which I'll plug a clip here from RD Craig uh, running as well. I don't have the full results, but thanks to Anthony Wallach, uh, he did check in with a bit of the rundown, at least of the men's field from um, his vantage point. Sounds like it was a pretty wild ride for Eric Wolfgang and Joe Downhill Nardo. Uh, they moved from 5th and 6th uh, going into the last climb, into the top two slots, and into the finish. Uh, so thanks to Eric for getting a clip on the day under the wire. Take it. What a cool honor to be on the Trails Collective YouTube channel video, the rundown for the week. Completely humbled by that. What a great event uh, this weekend put on at the The View 25K kind of a race uh, that was in doubt, put on by Craig and the PA Trail Dogs. And as always, guys did an absolutely fantastic job making this race happen. They didn't have the traditional Heiner 25K trail available because of some of the COVID restrictions and parts of the land that couldn't be used. But Craig and the Trail Dogs did an awesome job putting together a phenomenal course that was pretty much 25K using the brush hog and a leaf blower and throwing together some impromptu trails at the top of the mountain. A little rough on the ankles, but extremely well marked, very runnable, awesome job. Aid stations as always were top notch for a trail dogs race. Weather turned out to be absolutely beautiful for a November day. In northern Pennsylvania topping out around 60 degrees at the end of the race wonderful job put on by everybody there and if you didn't think humble hill could get any harder and I've never run myself the official Heiner race but I have been all the way up humble hill and seen the start of the race uh, thanks to Matt Lipsy Yep, that's me. But you're wondering how I got myself in this bird brain scenario. And most of the details are a little foggy, but what I can tell you is that as a prize-winning poultry, you should probably pay attention to where people place the emphasis in the phrase, we'd love to have you for dinner, especially around the holidays. <laughs> for showing me that this summer, if you didn't think it could get any harder, Craig and the guys decided for this one-off event that they were going to take you about halfway up Humble Hill, then throw an immediate right churn all the way back down into the gully, and then bring you back out again just to throw another you know, four to 500 feet of total climbing onto Humble Hill before you got to the actual view to kick off the first four, four and a half miles of that race. 
So that was a pretty sadistic touch uh, to throw onto there. <laughs> Kudos for that. After that, uh, it was a pretty back and forth race between a lot of guys. Just like all the other trail races I've ever run, everybody on the course, uh, from the spectators to the aid station people to the actual competitors, especially the competitors, so supportive throughout the whole thing, cheering each other on, encouraging everybody else all the way to the end of the race. I got to give a big shout out to relatively new trail racing guy, uh, Joseph Nardo, fellow Conestoga Cowboy teammate, yee yee, uh, for having an absolutely excellent race, following up an awesome finish at Call of the Wilds, battling it out till the absolute very end of this race as well. One of the closest finishes I've ever had in a trail race at this distance about six seconds between the two of us. Absolutely phenomenal competitor, awesome guy, uh, just an absolutely wonderful day all around. I couldn't be happier just to be part of the trail racing community in PA. Hopefully, as things go forward, we can take care of this whole COVID thing, clean it up, and then by April, rolling around. I know personally, finally, I've never done the official Heiner. I hope to be part of that thousand plus person event running the official 50k coming up this april so i hope that everybody has a great training cycle this winter i hope that everybody stays healthy get some good miles in and we can come out in 2021 blazing and run some awesome races at events put on by the absolutely phenomenal race directors like craig and those great groups like the pa trail dogs so that's what we got for you this week. Uh, tomorrow I will do some filming for the FKT Friday, and I'll also try to give you a little bit of rundown on uh, some media for the week. There are some pretty cool articles uh, that came out uh, that I'll plug. Uh, we also did a, uh, Trails, LA did a Trails Collective Live interview uh, this evening, which was really solid. We'll have it plugged. Look for it, and I will catch up with you tomorrow. See ya!